Thank you, everybody. And uh, thank you for Brian for providing a little bit of a backdrop of what I'm going to be talking about. So uh, my, name is, my name is Owen Beck and I work for the uh, National Biodiversity Data Center. And over the last year, I was doing a bit of work on uh, working towards the process of red listing uh, Ireland's wasp species. Um, and the work of this project is currently funded by the uh, National Parks and Wildlife Service. So just to kick off then, uh, just a little bit about the background and the aims of our project. So uh, the first stage of this would be the creation of a new data set. Um, very difficult to determine trends and species without having a centralized uh, data set uh, for all the species records. So that's part of step number one. Um, part of that was involved is digitizing uh, all of the historic and modern uh, WASP records uh, from across the island of Ireland. Um, this also included validating a lot of records which had been submitted through our citizens science portal um, at the data center. Um, and further to further the aims of improving uh, recorder ability, uh, to try and create species profiles to uh, just to increase awareness of some of the species which can be found here. And then finally to carry out additional survey work uh, to try and get a uh, more comprehensive idea of how some of these wasp species are referring here. So phase one was the creation of the new data set. And you can just see on the right hand side there, uh, this is a color map of Ireland, which shows where the records are coming from for wasp records. So definite hotspots, um, the northwest up around Stigo and then parts of the Dublin and Wicklow coasts in particular. Uh, there were quite a lot of uh, records came from those areas. So uh, the literature review, uh, so this was essentially just a case of looking through uh, journals like the Irish Naturalist or the Bulletin of the Irish Biogeographical Society, um, and trying to pull as many records as we could from the published papers and notes. Um, and then, as I say, the validation of existing records. So we had several hundred records of WASPs uh, that had been submitted through the MBDC Citizen Science Portal. And prior to this project, we didn't have any active validation process for these records. So they were essentially sitting there in our archives um, and they weren't really being put to any good use. So we were able to validate all of those records and add the appropriate ones to the new data set. Um, and then we were also able to collaborate with other organ organizations like CDAR and BWARS. And they had their own collection of records um, that we were able to utilize as well. So then on to phase two. Um, so this was really just a drive to try and improve the recorder capacity of wasps within Ireland. Um, so to try and promote this, uh, we created species profiles for the roughly 100 or so species of wasps that we have here in Ireland. Um, and these are free to access um, on our website. So this includes information on distribution and um, some images as well of the organisms and then um, as much ecological information as we could uh, gather about each one. And we also created an online PDF guide. So we focus mainly on the social wasp species, the sort of familiar vesper species, um, as they tend to be easier ones to identify. And uh, finally, we also had held several workshops. Um, these were just uh, sessions that we held um, to help familiarize recorders with Ireland's fauna. Um, we also touched on identification tips, uh, recording techniques, and basic ecological information. Um, and these were followed by field sessions. You can see the image on the right hand side there. And just to try and um, show the potential recorders what they might be likely to find. Uh, so then we move on to phase three. Uh, and this was the additional survey work. So we wanted to try and revisit uh, some of the sites that we highlighted in phase one. And um, these were sites that held particularly notable records of maybe rare um, unusual species or they uh, were sites that had particularly rich species assemblages. Uh, so we surveyed 44 sites across Ireland. You can just see there on the left-hand side the image of uh, where these sites were located. Um, they were recorded during the, uh, the peak flat times of most of Ireland's wasp species, which fall between May and September. Um, and the site selection, as I say, was based primarily on the presence of historical records, um, but we also tried to cover as wide a range of habitat as we could. Um, and also tried to get good spatial coverage across Ireland. So you can see there, um, we covered sites north, south, east, west, and in the Midland regions as well, um, just to get, as I say, as wide a spatial coverage as we could. 
um, and also utilized a wide range of survey techniques. Uh, so this included pan trapping, which I'm sure most people will be familiar with, uh, sweet netting and vision inspection. Um, so wasps can actually be quite easy to find at sites if you know certain features to look for. Um, often areas of bare sandy or clay banks, um, areas of dead wood, and patches of uh, nectar-rich sources like wild carrots, various embellifers, brambles, etc., can often just be easily uh, inspected for wasps. Um, in addition to the uh, the part survey techniques, so just to talk a little bit about some of our results. Um, so just shy of four thousand records. I think it's actually over four thousand records now with the latest batch of validated records um, are now present on the new data set. Um, and records were obtained for 99 species. So we have approximately 100 affiliate wasps in Ireland, which are the main focus here. Um, and we were able to obtain records of all but one, I think, of them. And the validation of wasp records is now live and ongoing. So that means that any time any records are submitted to the data center for wasps, um, that they will now be validated, usually with a fairly quick turnaround of about three months or so before they're added to the, to the data set. Um, and as part of the additional survey work, so we managed to record 50 species um, during the survey period, which is approximately 50% of Ireland's accumulated wasp fauna. Um, most abundant species, unsurprisingly, were Vespula vulgaris, which is a common wasp, and Melanus arvensis and Symorphus bifasiatus as well. Um, most widespread, again, unsurprisingly, was uh, Vespula vulgaris, which was found at all 44 sites. Then we had a type of potter wasp uh, known as Ancestroceras oviventris, which was found at about 14 sites. And then a type of digger wasp, Melanus arvensis, was found at 13 sites. And you can see just on the map on the right hand side, um, it's just color coded to uh, designate the particularly species rich areas in Ireland. So you can see there's a definite bias towards uh, coastal areas, particularly in the eastern parts of Ireland. Um, and that's partly down to a level of recording activity. But there are some very good habitats that are particularly rich in species on the East Coast, sites particularly Wicklow, Wexford and Waterford. Um, you can also see as well, there are some good areas down in the Southwest, sites like Glengarf and Clarny, uh, sorry, Clarny National Park down in Cork and Kerry um, also have some pretty nice species assemblages too. I just touched on a couple of notable finds that we made uh, during the survey work. Uh, so this species on the right-hand side, there is a species of digger wasp, that's boxed on a tiny atom. Um, so during the survey period, we made only the third uh, Irish record at the new site as well, at Pollard's Town Fen in County Kildare. Um, it's probably a species that suffers a lot from under-recording, but it's probably more widespread in Ireland than current records would suggest, um, which is a phenomenon which could be applied to many of Ireland's solitary wasps, really. And um, then we also had another digger wasp, which is Chrysoceros uh, stereus. Um, so this year we made only the fourth Irish record, and this was found in a new site not too far away from here at Lady Dixon Park in, in County Antrim. Um, and then the fellow on the bottom left there, that is a type of spider hunting wasp uh, called Anopleus tonsinus. And again, only the third Irish site at Grinbonia uh, Visitor Centre in County Meath. Um, and this is a species which tends to be associated with river shingle. Although interestingly, there were a lot of females that I noted at the site that were uh, present around a loose aggregate that was being used as a sort of like a ground level in the car park. So it maybe suggests that it is a more adaptable species than, than previously known. And then finally, this species, uh, which is probably one of the most familiar of the ones that we found, uh, was a vespid called Dolico vespida saxonica. Um, and again, only the third Irish record on site, which again, not too far away from here, Langham Meadows and County Antrim. Um, now, this is a relatively recent arrival in Ireland. Um, I think it was only added uh, to the Irish list in 2018 from Dunlopin and County Wicklow. Um, uh, the following year, it was then added in uh, Stormont Estate over in East Belfast. And then last year, again, at Langham Meadows. So it's a recent colonist of Britain as well. I think it was only recorded uh, for the first time in Britain during the late 70s, early 80s um, in the south of England. And over the past sort of 30 years or so, it has spread throughout much of Britain and has now crossed the Irish Sea in the past few years and has now turned up at several sites in the eastern part of Ireland. And we would very much expect this species to uh, continue to colonise inland throughout Ireland as well. Uh, a few more notable finds then. 
A little species here is Harpactus tumulus, which is a digger wasp which preys on um, various bugs, uh, Hemiphthera. And this was found at Ballyteague Borough. So there are fewer than 10 Irish records of this species. Um, it tends to be limited to the southeast of the island and um, that we know of so far and is prevalent coastal. And we also had a species of cuckoo wasp, sometimes known as ruby-tailed wasp, which is Hedicridium ardens. And this one was found at Ballyteague Burrows in British Bay, which are in Wicklow uh, and Wexford, respectively. And again, there are fewer than 10 Irish records for this species. Uh, it's a parasitic species on another type of solitary wasp. And again, um, very much limited to the southeast coast. Then we had Chrysostris capitosus, another uh, solitary digger wasp uh, from Lagan Meadows in Sagatan Dam in County Armagh. Again, fewer than 10 Irish records. And both of these represent new sites for that species. Um, this is one of the species that would benefit from uh, dead wood, um, which is a primary nesting site. Um, it tends to do well in areas of undisturbed woodland. And just to touch on this species, this is a type of potter wasp, uh, which is Munis popularius. And this was recorded for the very first time in Ireland, uh, just back in September there. Um, and it was recorded by Janet Whelan down in County Wexford. Um, it's, not act, it's not established in Britain or Ireland that we know of, um, and was probably an inventive record. Um, due to its nesting habitats, it is a species that is susceptible to moving around with uh, timber and other such products like that. So it may well have arrived uh, in the Ireland that way. So in terms of the future direction and uh, the next few steps, um, the survey work will continue this year. Um, as part of the project, we'll also be incorporating um, advanced surveying into this as well to start the, the ball rolling for that group, um, as well as WASPs. Um, records, as I say, will be continued to be validated and added to the data set to try and grow the number of records that we have. Um, and just to get as comprehensive um, a data set as we can before the red listing process is, is undertaken. Um, additional workshops will be held later on this year as well, just to try and increase the recorder base and increase the number of quality records that we have coming in uh, for this group. And um, as Brian mentioned, the WASP red list is on the waiting list, and we hope to be able to do that at some stage over the coming years. And just thought I would throw this in at the end here, just as it's uh, quite topical at the minute, uh, just a little bit about the Asian hornet, which is... Uh, uh, a very much an unwanted species of wasp uh, that is the potential to turn up here. Um, very large and robust species, um, 2.5 to 3 centimetres in length, so larger than any other wasp species that we have by a considerable margin. Um, also compared to the other uh, vespid wasps, it tends to be predominantly black in colour um, with orange markings, yellow-orange markings in the abdomen and the face. And the primary reason why I'll just touch on it that we don't really want them here is that they're very, uh, they tend to be quite ecologically destructive. Uh, they're voracious predators of various other insects, um, particularly flying insects, bees, other wasps, and various flies. Um, and there is one Irish record so far, uh, which, as it says, there uh, was a female that turned up dead in Dublin in April of 2021. Uh, since then, there have been no uh, known sightings of it, um, but it has been found in Britain in several instances of the past few years, and it is one that we need to be very vigilant of. Um, and as I said, it goes without saying that should you find it, uh, just there are several ways to record it. Um, if you're in the north, uh, you can record it on the CDAR uh, recording system. Uh, that's the second hyperlink there. Uh, if you're in the Republic of Ireland, then submit it to ourselves at the National Biodiversity Data Centre. Um, of course, you can email us uh, directly to and with that, I'd just like to say uh, thanks for listening and hope you enjoyed it. Yes, we've been in contact with Aidan down at the National Museum of Ireland, and uh, the process of him transferring the records onto this data set is. Well, the poll's rolling with that, let's say. Um, and yes, I was in contact with Damien at CDAR. And as far as I know, it's the same applies uh, for the North as well, that we're, we're going to try and get the records uh, from the museum specimens and um, loaded onto the data set in due course.
I think it's a very good question, um, and it's a tough one to answer. Um, but one of the problems that we face in Ireland is uh, simply the lack of knowledge that we have for some particular invertebrate groups. And I think we need to. I think it's important that we try to initiate some form of conservation effort. Um, as opposed to that, it would be a case of species maybe slipping away without us even knowing that they were ever here. And um, so I think. It's definitely better to try and concentrate efforts into um, species groups that we know that we could potentially save. Um, Brian might be a better person to, to answer questions on the red list of invertebrates than I might. Um, but as I say, I think it is definitely something that we should look to look to pursue. Um, yeah, that's a good, good question. Well, well, good, good, very good question. So, yeah, uh, just just to answer the first one, uh, the first answer. I think we have, you know, we have to do it because um, you know, you can do it. <laughs> that's nothing would happen at all. So these these red lists, as perfect as they are, and they are often excellent at looking through them, are at least raising the profiles of those things. It is that that's. that's Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you. I think that we should now adjourn for lunch.